Okay, so one of the questions I'm asked most is how to sew spandex without a serger. So I want to do just a little video uh, to go over how to do it and kind of some of the variables that you need to keep in mind. Um, I'm using a regular white sewing machine. It's like 40 years old. Um, and I only use straight stitch and zigzag. Now, a lot of sewing machines will come with different like stretch stitches and stuff. I don't, I don't use those. I don't use the three-step um, zigzag or anything either. I just use plain zigzag. Uh, and I'll show you how it works here. Um, so first of all, if you sew spandex normally, like just a normal stitch like this, the big problem is it doesn't stretch. So you just get a mess here. Some machines with differential feed will help you in how it stretches. To me, I find that you don't get enough stretch when it's the machine doing the stretch for you. Um, so what I do is I use a neutral differential feed. It's not an issue on this one, but when it comes to my serger, which I'll get into in a bit, um, I use a neutral uh, differential feed. The manual technique works for both sewing machines and for sergers. So I'll go in, tack it. Now, what you do is you have to stretch the spandex uh, in both directions from the sewing machine. You have to stretch both ways before you start sewing, and you have to hold it until you stop sewing. If you have to stop sewing for any reason, whether it's to um, redo your tension or because your arm's tired or whatever, stop your machine and then let go of your tension. Don't adjust your pull in either direction while you're sewing, no matter what. Um, that's dangerous. It'll pull the needle. You can screw up the timing on your machine and you can get, you can, if you break a needle and I'm speaking from experience here, uh, when I was in my early teens, I once did that and I kind of jerked the fabric and I ended up in the ER with getting a little tiny piece of sewing machine taken out of my eye and that was not fun. So I recommend avoiding that and you can do that with this technique. So as I said, you get ready and you pull the fabric in both directions. You get it nice and taut and then you sew your straight stitch. So when you're pulling it, you're pulling it as hard as you can. Like you want it to be at the full degree of stretch. And you see there, you can pull it and it's not going anywhere. Here's the other side. See, I'm pulling it to the full degree of stretch. It's not going to break. Um, now what I do, uh, because you see the, the spandex tends to curl away from the seam like this, and it's kind of ugly. And also just to reinforce what I'm doing is I put a wide zigzag on it. So what I do is I go to the widest stitch usually to a medium length. If you do a long stitch length, you're not going to get a lot of stretch out of it. And if you do a really short stitch length, it's going to what we call lettuce edge and it'll basically ruffle the end of it, um, which isn't the end of the world, but it's not the nicest looking thing. So you can avoid that by doing a medium stitch length. Uh, so once again, you get it in, you pull it to the full degree. And what you're doing is you're aiming to have the right side of the stitch just over the edge of the fabric. And that's what you get. Now you see there is some degree of ruffling, but that's fine because it gives you the leeway to have a nice strong seam. So that's how you sew a basic um, structural seam with a sewing machine. So I'd use this for, you know, side seams, shoulder seams, that kind of thing. Uh, when I'm sewing elastic in, I use just the zigzag and it's the same thing. So what I'll do is, and I'll do an elastic video at some point, but it's the same thing where I'll stretch it and move it forward. <laughs> I don't do that, but stretch it and bring it forward at a, at a maintained tension. Um, again, like you don't want to stretch it more as you go and you don't want to let go of it. Uh, that is a safety issue and a quality issue, um, as well as making sure that you don't screw up your sewing machine. It's really easy. You just have to remember hold and move as one, basically as one solid force. With the straight stitch, I didn't mention this, um, I like to do a relatively small stitch. What happens is your stitch, once you let go, because when you, when you stretch it like this, your seam size looks different once like it shrinks down when you let go. So if you have a really big stitch, you get big loops. Um, actually, I'll show you that. Get my stretch in. Now this machine, the lengths aren't super long, but you can see on the back there, 
that it's loose. Yeah, so that's why you want to use a smaller stitch. If you can see this, that side doesn't have the big loops. It's nice and strong. This one's also nice and strong, but it's just, it's ugly. And when you open it, it's loose. Whereas this one here, it's nice tight. Now, as I get into in the post, um, when you're using thread, obviously use thread that matches. Um, for the sake of demonstration, I'm using white on black, which I would never do uh, in real life, um, just because it shows better on the video and in the photos. So that's how to sew spandex without a sur serger. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to sew it with a serger. Uh, this is my baby lock serger. I've had it since 2003, I think. I've got two of them. I love them. They're amazing. They do come with a lot of options down here. This is the differential feed. So there's ruffling and there's stretch stitch. The further down here is the stretch stitch. You can use that if you like. I tend not to just because I find that when the machine is responsible for the stretch, you don't get as much stretch as you do when you do it manually, which is how I do it. So I always keep my, uh, my differential feed on neutral, as you can see here. So what I do for my structural seams on this machine, I put it on a three, which is a somewhat long stretch or sem somewhat long stitch, but not the longest stitch. I reserve the longest stitches for applying elastic. Um, so it's on a normal stitch. Um, the, the width of your stitch doesn't really matter. Um, I'll do like a medium to full width usually. Uh, but if I'm sewing for extreme, like for really little kids, I'll do a, a smaller width just so that it's not so much bulk for them. What you're going to have to do is pull your fabric both directions and hold it tight as you sew. Move your hands in unison so your degree of stretch is maintained the entire way. At no point when the machine's actually going do you want to stretch it more in either direction and you don't want to let go of your stretch. This can put strain on the needles, it can break your needles, it'll screw up your actual sewing, and it doesn't give you a very durable finished product. For the best results and for safety, you're going to want to stretch it and hold it and don't adjust your stretch. If you have to let go for any reason, if your arms get tired or you have to adjust to add more stretch, stop the machine first and then restretch and then start. You pull it to the full length of stretch that it goes, like this is as far as the spandex is going to go, and then you just start sewing. So there you see, that's got a full, full degree of stretch without using a stretch stitch. And you see it's nice and tight because I used, a, like I didn't use the full length of stitch and it's just a nice seam. So that's how I sew my structural seams with a serger.